everybody. My name's Carrie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is March 14th, 2023. And this is my little corner of the YouTube world where I like to share my crafty makes and works in progress. So today I do have some quilting, knitting, and crochet, and some machine knitting. So um, I thought I would just take some time this afternoon uh, to kind of, I don't know, just jump back in again. Uh, it's been kind of an emotional last couple of weeks. My mother-in-law did pass away a couple weeks ago. Um, if you've been with me for a little while, you know that she was in memory care since November and she passed away the end of February. So it's been, you know, emotional. We're all doing fine. Fine, if, if, you know, we're all fine. We knew she was deteriorating. We knew it was coming, so it wasn't a shock. It's just sad, even if you know it's happening. And then it's been emotional going through, like we went through a bunch of photo albums to try and pull pictures. My brother-in-law put together a slideshow for her celebration of life that we had this past weekend. And so going through um, family photo albums and stuff just brings up a lot of memories and a lot of you know joy and just all the all the emotions <laughs> I've had all the emotions so um, I haven't been extremely creative I have been making some things and I haven't been on social media a whole lot I just you know took some time to just process what I needed to process in my own time so you know we're moving forward and like I said, it's all good. It's just kind of sad. So, um, like I said, I have been working on some things and um, I've had some fails. <laughs> I have had some wins and, you know, you just keep trucking along. So, as you can see, I have made a little bit more progress on my quilt that I'm working on with a group of friends. This is the City Sampler quilt. It's out of 100 blocks uh, 100 modern blocks something like that by Tula Pink uh, I shared it before I'll put links to it and everything else down below and I'm um, finished with the I have one more chapter left so I'm at 85 ish 86 blocks that I've done and it goes to 100 so I'm really really close I'm losing steam part of it is because I'm just getting tired of working with kind of the same fabrics. I am to have chosen to make it, I'm trying to make two different quilts, a green one and a blue one, using just scraps that I had. And so there are, you know, several different fabrics within my scraps, but um, I'm just getting tired of working with them and I'm getting tired of working on this quilt. So I need to keep focused because I'm so close, but then I think I don't I don't particularly like either one I haven't particularly liked this quilt from the beginning but I haven't felt too bad about it because I didn't buy any fabric to make it it's all just scraps that I had and um, so at this point I'm looking at how would would I set it and I I've got an idea of what I can do to make a green quilt and a blue quilt so then maybe Jim and I each have our own quilts in our trailer but I don't really need quilts in the trailer I already have quilts that we use. <laughs> I don't really need them. So the thought of buying more fabric to finish them off, because I would need fabric to go in between the blocks and however I would set it, you need to buy backing and all that. And it's like, I don't really like them. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. But when I was trying to figure out kind of ways that I would um, set them, I had talked about putting little sashing around um, the blocks to separate them and doing like a fuchsia pink it with the green and then like kind of a tomatoey orange red with the blue it looked really cool and I I do like working with Kona solids it's um, uh, it's Robert Kaufman is the maker the brand and Kona solids are just solid fabrics and I had a color card similar to this but it was old and they've come out with like a hundred more colors since I had my original one. So I bought a new one so that I had updated colors and I just want to hang this on the wall because <laughs> I just love it. It is little squares of actual fabric of all their Kona solids 
and um, it is super helpful when you're trying to pick because you know how colors look different online even though you might be um, you know like yeah I think this looks this is kind of a fuchsia pink or whatever it could come and be a completely wrong color so if I have this then um, I have a better way to see how things look with it so I was really glad that I bought this and I found this on Hancock's of Paducah which is a store and a website um, I'll put the link down below but it's great to have a color card of whatever I have um, one for Moda Bella solids and I have Essex linen and I have different ones so because I do shop mostly online and when I'm trying to match a particular shade of something I find it helpful to have the actual colors in front of me um, like yarn I don't mind so much because I'm not usually trying to match exactly it's like okay it could be a little bit of a different color than I thought but it's going to be a pair of socks what difference does it make or whatever but something like this if you get the wrong color it could really alter it so I, I have my swatches now so I can go forth and try and figure out what I'll do do I need to finish it if I don't what do I do with these hundred blocks you know it's that kind of thing I'm just I don't know I'm not super crazy about it I don't want to make a big quilt with all of them because it makes this it, the way the pattern there they have some patterns in the book and the way they are there it's a square quilt and I don't like square quilts and I don't need a quilt anywhere on any bed <laughs> so <laughs> I don't need to do that um, I, you know, for, as far as making it, I'm great. I'm glad I didn't buy any fabric, so I'm not really out anything. Um, it's been great getting together with friends over Zoom and um, sharing in other people's excitement and what they're doing and, you know, being part of that. I just don't know what I'm going to do with this. So continuing on, might as well finish the 100 blocks. Like I said, I've still got, it's weird because I've gone through quite a few scraps and I feel like my bins don't look any less full <laughs> so I don't know how that happens part of it's also because I'm rummaging around so nothing's folded really nicely anymore but you know feels good to get some use out of the scraps and um so that's not a bad thing um that's it for me quilting wise I have been doing a little bit of knit knitting and I have to share this because I'm really excited about it so this is a finished mostly finished object project so I knit this on my knitting machine I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory um, I have a flatbed knitting machine and um, I've been able to make things with it but I and I when I got it it's an old machine from the 80s maybe or something and I cleaned it up and everything was in pretty good shape it just needed to be cleaned up a lot of these machines are in people's attics or basements or something and they sell them when there's an estate sale or something like that so I cleaned it all up it's working great but I, as I would knit things I would get to a certain point and then it was really hard to move the carriage and I can't figure out why and I tried all different adjustments and everything and I thought you know the only thing I haven't changed on this was needles they all look great but maybe there's a maybe they're bent ever so slightly and it's not working so I ordered new new needles put all the new needles in and it was working great well a friend of mine just recently purchased a knitting machine and so she's been diving into the internet and trying to get as much information as she can and she's dug up a couple of really interesting sites and one of them was a website and this this lady has a YouTube channel as well and it is abstract knit factory and like I said, I'll put links down below. And she's an engineer. She has a knitting machine. I think she actually has the same machine as me. And um, so she's she has a video tutorial on making a swancho. And she also on her website has kind of a, it's not really a pattern, but like kind of how many stitches you need and how many rows to do for some different things. You plug in what your gauge is, what dimensions you want it to end up and then it it develops this kind of pattern for you and so one of the things was a swancho and I thought I can try it so it's knit sideways normally when you're knitting stuff you're knitting it this way but it knit from here across um, and I thought okay I, let me try that I don't know if I'll wear a swancho but I'm curious I think I might because um, 
kind of like a poncho. I mean, it's a swancho, so it's a poncho sweater, right? So I thought, you know what? Let me just grab all my little partial skeins that I have um, from sweaters and socks and uh, pro hats, project, whatever projects I have, you know, partial skeins. Some of them are bigger than others, but it, I just have these cakes and cakes of these partial skeins. And I thought, what if I um, just kind of make it striped? Because the stripes will be vertical, being that I'm knitting it sideways. And so that'll be a little more flattering rather than stripes. Normally, when we knit things, our stripes are going horizontal, and I don't need to look any wider than I am. Um, so I dug out all my little balls and I kind of put them in color order and figured out how many rows I would do and I wanted to kind of do like different widths of rows like you can see this is just a few rows and then this is wider and it's all leftover yarn from different things this was a hat um, you know all different things and so I did it you make two pieces so one's gonna be the front and the back whatever and then you seam it up you um, you put the you have some stitches on waist yarn which is like having a pr provisional cast on and you can pick those up and do uh, ribbing my ribber wasn't i couldn't get it to work i've never done ribbing on my ribber i've used my ribber to make socks because it helps um in a for you to make things in a circle but i've never done ribbing and i couldn't i couldn't get it to work it just wasn't working so i thought okay i have to play with that another time i'll just hand knit them so i picked up the stitches and knit the ribbing by hand and um and then you just seam it up so it's got mistakes it's not perfect because then I wasn't worrying about perfection I was just kind of seeing is would it be something I would wear and I really think I would now I just took this off the blocking mats this morning so today is the first day I've had a chance to wear it so there's no edging on the top it's just rolled edge I do think I'm going to take it in about an inch on either side this is just mattress mattress seamed so I'll just mattress seam a little bit more to take it in because I don't like that being open as far because it's like almost off my shoulders but it's done I don't have an edging and that is something I, I need to figure out I'm going to do kind of an applied edging of some sort so it keeps it from rolling up I did uh, wind or not wind weave in all my ends I have them a little bit long because I waited till I blocked it but this was a lot of ends to weave in because every every stripe was a start and a stop. So, um, and then I thought, okay, well, this is kind of crazy. This is going to look sort of circus tent-ish, right? So I thought, well, let me do the other side a different color so that if I want to do it different, I just turn it around and it's a little mellower. And I did these panels the same color because I had, I think I had a full skein, almost a full skein of this one. And so I did this more planned, I guess. So you don't have all the crazy colors. But I see, you can see I need that neckline, <laughs> neckline finished. So it does kind of, it does have a swooped, um, it's curved, kind of goes like this. Um, I think it's long enough. I just need something to, maybe weigh it down. She suggested doing an I-cord edge, but I don't know that I want that. Um, I'm afraid that would make, would stiffen the edge and then make it kind of like tent out and I don't need that. But you know what, to just, I'm not gonna plan on going out anywhere in this, but I will wear it in the house. <laughs> so, you know, it makes me happy to see all these beautiful colors and got a chance to use the yarn. So um, it actually was a win and my machine worked great and so I was super happy. So now I've just got to f figure out what I'm going to do on the bottom if I do anything at all. I was looking at maybe crocheting something. Um, I was looking at videos of doing like an applied border, but everything I found you have the stitches of your garment on the needle and these are all edge stitches because it was sideways it was knit this way so these are all edge stitches and I think picking them up with a crochet hook would be better so I don't know I might try some things and see how it um, what it does I can always rip it out but I'm gonna leave this um, I'm not gonna do an edge on this having that rolled under is it works great so it's actually really nice because it's 
just enough warm like today's actually pretty warm because the sun came out and we're actually gonna be warm today it's like 70 in here yeah it's over 50 outside which is pretty warm considering we've been winter till yesterday um, so not too much use out of it probably right now but I really think I'm gonna get some use out of it and I kind of want to make another one maybe in a solid color so that it's not so crazy because um, I like the idea of wearing a poncho and I do have one but it's like like the triangle front kind of thing but I'm short enough that it just feels like that point gets in the way like you know you bend over to pick something up and then you've got like your poncho swinging out <laughs> just gets in the way and so I think by having some little bit of a sleeve on here and it being kind of open and airy and it's just fingering weight um it, I think it's going to be wearable I just got to fix that neckline because I can tell that's just gonna bug me I always feel like everything's falling off my shoulders probably in a twist because I did that whole maneuver there <laughs> so this was a win and um I'm excited to try something else one thing that was challenging is I just had some old sock yarn that I used as the waist yarn and um, so like here I on the side you do a Kitchener and I did the Kitchener but I did it inside out so I have an actual seam that shows <laughs> whatever but um, was it this side yeah this side so the waist yarn that I had actually was where this met to it was dark and I had the hardest time telling what was my live stitches and what was my waist yarn so definitely learned have something super high contrast so i actually did buy i don't know if you can see no you can't see it i did buy uh, a cone of cotton um fingering weight cotton so that i can and it's white and i'm like i don't ever knit anything white so that'll show up no matter what and then i got another cone to make something else which i'll show you in a minute but um, yeah, that was challenging because I got did really good. You Kitchener and it did really, really good. And then I pulled it out and I realized I didn't catch the right stitches here. And it just all went Bleh. So I had some, some surgery to do. So you can kind of see part of the seam like right here. But like I said, I'm not going out in this. So it, it's fine. It's fine for me to just wear around the house to sit and knit in and it's all good but I'm, I am really happy with it. So um, that, was, that was a win. Um, I did have worked a little bit on my Hit to Few Day sweater. I'm not gonna show you because you're not gonna see the difference. I put another maybe four inches on it. I've got two more repeats to do, but the repeats take a really long time because I've added a bunch more stitches because it um, makes it like flowy towards the bottom. So there's a lot of stitches on there and it's a, 16 row repeat so I've got 32 rows to go of this lace pattern and then I think I'm done so I'm really close I will finish it I'm just not going to show you guys and um, I have also been working on my vertices unite which I screwed up on had to tear out a section I'm still working on it though <laughs> I started again so I was getting to section five and um, it is a section that that shows it to be uh, striped but I decided to just do it in the solid color so I chose this is sidewalk chalk by needles at the ready I love it it is also the color that's in here in between here and um, I was doing it doing this wedge and I was getting to seem like I'm almost done with it I just got to connect this little bit and I was about this far actually and I'm like this wedge is gigantic what the heck is happening well I realized I had been increasing every other row instead of every fourth row on the one side so I was I was making way more stitches than than there needed to be and it was like really messing up my wedge so ripped it out started that back over and i'm almost i'm almost done i've just got this little bit more to go and then there's one more wedge which doesn't look like it's very big and i think i'm going to use this beautiful uh, purpley color here that i got from fiber hustle to do that final wedge so <clears throat> excuse me it will be finished shortly um 
I, yeah, and then it's going to be spring and I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> so, okay, this is getting warm because like I said, it's like 70 up here. I don't need to be wearing a swan show. <laughs> Whew. All right. Ah, that's better. So as I'm thinking, you know, we're going into spring, we're going into warmer weather. I really wanted to make kind of a lacy sort of over top, you know, to wear like a tank underneath or something. And my friend Nancy of Trilogy Yarns, she had this really cute sweater, I guess you call it a sweater, and she crocheted it um, out of some of her yarn. And she wore it to Rhinebeck and it was really cute. She just had like a tank top underneath and it was really cute. And I thought, well, that's actually really cute to wear when the weather's like not really cold or, you know, whatever. But I wanted to make it out of a cotton so that I could, would be something I would wear during the summer. So she told me what the pattern is. And the pattern is the Ohana, ah, ah, ha, han, ha, ha, <laughs> ha, ha, Anyway, it is a crocheted pattern. And um, so I decided to make it out of this cobalt blue. I know it's not purple because I don't do everything in purple. Um, so this is the same yarn that I got to work on my on my knitting machine as waste yarn that I bought in white. And I thought, well, shoot, since I'm buying one, I might as well buy two. And it was very inexpensive. It's really nice. It is a very round um spun yarn and it's cotton but it's nice to work with i'm crocheting it and i'm not having any problems this is their cotton kings and it is 1859 yards at 500 grams so i have enough to make a sweater out of this cone and i like working from larger cones because then there's no ends to weave and you just keep going it fits perfectly in my little flannel bag that Lori made me and, you know, it was like kind of not fun at first just because I'm not great. If you know my <laughs> trials with trying crochet, I, and crochet is not um, great for me, but I'm determined to make it work. So I've got that going and I think it's going to be really pretty. So it makes, you basically make like a square because it has a boat neck, which not super in love with boat necks. The Swancho's a boat neck, but it's meant to be sort of loose. So, um, you know, once this blocks out, which I didn't gauge, I didn't, I just started. I started with the recommended hook size um, and we'll just kind of go from there. But I'm doing okay. I'm actually not screwing it up, so that's good. Um, that's the back side, which I think looks the same as the front side, but there, maybe you can see it better. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. It's what I've been working on the last couple of evenings. Once I got, I did a foundation chain, foundation chain, is that what we call it? Foundation chain, I think is what you call it, on the bottom, with, but instead of just chaining a hundred and whatever chains, I, I got on YouTube and found out how to do a, a chain thing. My friend taught me a while ago, but unless you do it all the time, it doesn't stay in there. It's filled with all kinds of other things. So once I got maybe an inch or so and felt like I had something to hold on to, it's actually going pretty well and a pretty easy pattern to do as long as you just keep, keep on track of what row you're on. So you just do this until you get to a certain length and then... I don't know, shape for armholes, I think, because you make the sleeves, sleeves separately, I believe. Then you make the back the same way. So this is just one. It's either the front or the back. So it'll just be kind of a loose-fitting little cotton top that'll take a long time because it is fingering weight, and I'm not fast at crochet. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's, it's, I just needed something different. I've been resisting casting anything on that's new. I have things I want to make. I wrote them in my little book and this was not on the book. I don't think. Maybe it was. I don't know. And then I cast on some socks, which wasn't in the book. So, so far I haven't checked anything off my list, but I have started a couple new projects. I was resisting for a long time and then I was just like, I didn't feel like knitting because I didn't feel like knitting on what I had going. And I thought, I'm just torturing myself. <laughs> well start something 
so I will. I have done a few stripes on my Desperate Housewife cardigan. Um, I'm probably this far from the from the armpit, so I still have a ways to go. But that's not a sweater I'm going to wear for a while, so I've actually put that aside for a little bit. I've got it up here so that if I'm zooming or something, that could be the project I work on up here because it's just stuck in it. But uh, I cast on some socks. So I originally thought, oh gosh, I just did so well with my new needles on my machine. This is so great. Let me throw on some socks and I'll just knit up this, you know, these socks to do. And I couldn't get socks. I couldn't make socks. It wasn't working. I'm like, oh my God. It's so frustrating when my machine doesn't work because I don't know what's wrong. And there's nowhere to go. It's like if your sewing machine doesn't do what you want it to do, something sounds funky or whatever, you can take it to a maintenance, you know, somebody to do maintenance on it. And they'll clean it. They'll service it. They'll do whatever. But this, I'm on my own. So I've tried everything and I was getting super frustrated because these socks wouldn't knit and I thought screw it I'm just going to knit them myself and this is yarn that Michelle gave me a long time ago and it was already wound into to two different cakes I think she was going to make them and then didn't decided that she didn't like the color or something I don't know what gave it to me and then when I was digging out all those balls of yarn to make my swancho boom those came out and I thought that's the socks I'm going to make so I've been wanting to do two at a time socks. I've done it once when I worked from a double sock blank. It's kind of the only way to do it is to do them at two at a time and haven't done it since. So I thought, well, this is my chance. And then this gives me something easy to pick up and grab and knit wherever I am. So I started them, I haven't gotten very far because, because now I'm crocheting. <laughs> But I did start them. So it is making kind of a neat pattern. Um, I am going to try, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try the um, shadow wrap heel that Denise of Earth Tones Girl has done a video tutorial and it's on YouTube. I watched it and it looks like it would be great. I think I can do it while these are both on the needle. And um, so I'm going to give that a try and see how that fits. It is a version of a short row heel and it looks really nice and it's one I haven't done yet. So I figured I'd try that. So I'm doing two at a time. Um, haven't figured out the yarn management quite so much, but it's all good. Uh, so it feels like it goes slower because obviously I would have had, you know, this much done on a sock if I was just doing one, but they'll both be done and they'll both be exactly the same. And I know there's a lot of pluses to doing them two at a time. So that is what I'm going to work on. Um, I have talked in the past about wanting to make something out of like that limey chartreuse green and fuchsia. And I have been looking for a sweater to to use that color combination in and I've, I've felt like I've found something every once in a while and I'm like I just think that might be like a little crazy right I mean I'm I'm not afraid to wear color but I also don't want to look like I'm trying too hard <laughs> so I thought maybe doing a fuchsia and green sweater may not be the right thing to do but I am going to try and make some mitts let me go grab that yarn and I'm going to show you what I'm going to make so if you watch uh, Needles at the Ready, you have seen Kevin and Ray. Kevin's gotten pretty far on his making these mitts. And they're called, the mitts are called Moro Lake by Kate Gag Gagnon Osborne. And they are really cool graphic uh, color work mitt in the style of like cell boo mittens. And I thought how fun that would be to do this. So it says it takes 200 yards of um, each color. And this is 50 grams. So I'm assuming it's going to be about 200 <laughs> yards. You know, I like to live on the edge. So I think this, this is just a skein of stuff I dyed like a while ago and I use it as scrap yarn. But there's 50 grams of it, so I think there might be enough. And then this is a Lolo Did It colorway called Complete Secret um, that I got from Kevin and Ray um, when we were in Rhinebeck. And 
I think that'll be really pretty. Now the, this is um, super wash as opposed to something more toothy for color work, but they're mitts and I'll probably never wear them, but they're really pretty and I think that would be fun. And then that would help curb that desire to make something with this combination and not have it be a wild and crazy stupid uh, sweater. I still have a similar color. The color that I have for a sweater is a little more blue than this um, and another skein of this. So I still could do a sweater. Maybe. I'm still thinking about it. But I think I'm going to do the mitts out of this. So that's another cast on I'm trying not to cast on that I don't think is in my book. So what good did the book do? I put all this list of stuff and I'm like, there, I'm good to go for the year. Yeah, I'm just finding other things to make. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm generally kind of a planner in life, <laughs> but I'm also a fly by the seat of my pants kind of a person. So I think my crafting is more like that. <laughs> it's whatever comes my way, whatever blows through. I'm like, yes, let's do that. So um, I hope you are all well and um, thank you for hanging out with me. But that's all I've got for you today. And I hope to be back on soon with some more finished things. And um, that quilt should be, the blocks of the quilt should be done. The quilt won't be done, but the blocks should be done. So I hope you're well. Thanks for joining me and I will see you all later. Bye.